It's that most wonderful time of the year. It's the end of season review and transfer special. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. So we just finished our second season at Leicester. We gained automatic promotion from the championship the first year, making the Premier League for only the second time in the last two decades for Leicester City. And we had a top half finish, finishing ninth just outside of the European qualifying. So that is definitely on the books as a goal, personal goal for this year. But let's jump into the end of season review after we roll the intro. Hey guys, RC here, back with Club 3, episode 17 of our FM21 Journeyman Save. Please don't forget, if you like what I'm doing here, hit that like button for me. Just helps more people potentially get to see the video. Subscribe if you're new, and uh, yeah, hit that notification bell because that keeps you up to date with daily Football Manager content here on the channel. As we mentioned in the uh, intro, we have uh, stayed up our first season, so we've got to chalk that up as a huge success for a club that has been challenged to uh, even reach the Premier League over the last 20 plus years. So let's take a look at the end of season review. We'll start off with last year's transfers, and I guess they get ranked out. We discovered last year that uh, this does not sort in any fashion other than average rating. Even if you click on it, Jan Gomez, 20-year-old center back, uh, he did make three appearances for us, but most of the time, uh, as you can see, he was loaned out. Eric Graves became one of our, became our top striker. 17 million, 41 starts, 35 goals, and six assists. I'm not sure how he wasn't Player of the Year or signing of the season. He was my signing of the season, let's put it that way. Aaron Fowler, a reserve center, well, a center back, 22 years old, uh, came in from Chelsea, 43 and a half million. What the hell was I thinking? 15 starts, one goal, one assist, and a nice rating. In fairness, he's actually very good. But remember, we only signed him because we had a ton of money left in the transfer budget, and I really wanted to upgrade at center back. Uh, did we get, we got a C plus for Graves. I think the board is demented. Uh, just my thought. Uh, Massa Milano, Pascarello, a C grade on him. $8 million cost in the mid C in the winter window. 20 starts, three goals, five assists playing out on that right wing. Rene Esser came in from Schalke on a free and uh, six appearances, played well. I think he's got some potential, but he's going to be a bench player for us. Uh, Zavi Dorsa, uh, he is on, I don't know, says we signed him at Leicester, but uh, he oh, he's out on loan. He's our player. I don't know what the deal is. I'm confused. Uh, Massel Kowalski, another fullback from Everton, $52 million, 36 starts, two goals, two assists. Didn't play horribly, but worth $52 million? Probably not. Dean Clark just did not play much this year. 15 and a quarter million. He played out of position because we went to that three back set and we do not have a right back. And that's where Dean plays. He's really good. And uh, I don't know. We may have to come up with something this year. Even if we stay with that three back, I'm thinking instead of four midfielders, maybe two central mids and two wing backs. And Dean, I think, could slot there. Problem is that forces Pascarello to uh, come off the field. Yeah, I just don't know. Don't know. Probably need to start retraining him for sure. Luke Rowe, a 27-year-old striker, $5 million. Uh, Kukelis and Falsettini, a couple of guys out on loan currently. Didn't cost us a lot. Younger players uh, for the future. Mateus, our first official Wonder Kid signing of Football Manager 21. That was huge. $26.5 million. 35 appearances, 20 starts, and 5 assists. I'm hoping this is one of those situations that we do see on occasion 
where it takes that year to really get settled. You have to finish the language courses before we start recognizing or seeing his full potential. He still is only 20, but didn't perform where I had hoped he would. But I, I think he'll get better. I think he'll get better. Felix, a 23-year-old fullback, 55000 out on loan. Uh, Radim Burnett uh, from Fulham, a young goalkeeper, and uh, C-minus grade there. Fair enough. That was our transfers in. Going on the outside, uh, Jake Rush, one of our team leaders, former team captain, $38 million off to China. Uh, Andre Pachinko, $15.25 million. I believe that's Russia. Might not be. It's somewhere in the Eastern Bloc based on the spelling. And it could be, I don't know, could be in the Middle East somewhere. I don't know. The team that shall not be named, Danny Parsons goes there for fourteen and a quarter million. Sylvester Robert goes to Orlando for four point two. Christian Langley six and a half million to Aston Villa. Dylan Maxwell, uh, Mathau Henry, Lindorfo thirty one million for him uh, as he departs. So there's our outgoing guys. I think we did some business this year. We were supposed to fight bravely against relegation, which typically means you can get relegated and not get fired. And we finished ninth, so we did a pretty bang-up job. And that is 18 points clear of Middlesbrough in the relegation battle. So, good season. Eric Graves was the top scorer in the competition, and we had 94% attendance. Mad at those Leicester fans with this club in the Premier League not showing up. And I think it was mostly cup games. Doesn't matter. Show up and support your team. Plastics. <laughs> anyway, I got a lot of room to talk, right? Biggest win, 7-0 over Fleetwood in the FA Cup. 3-1 over Man City was a huge win in the league. And a 3-2 defeat uh, saw Esser's goal of the season. How strange a young reserve player gets the goal of the season for us. Finances, we know this will change a little bit. Uh, $33 million in sponsorship. Uh, broadcast revenue jumps from one from $44 million to $122 million, so that's nice. Uh, about about $100,000 more in corporate and hospitality. $35.12 million in competition prize money. And you know what? It's telling us we did not win any prize money in the championship. I wonder if that was something COVID. No, because we're way in the future. That's bollocks. That's why we didn't see the trophy presentation, because they didn't have any prize money. That sucks. Uh, and then uh, right at the same on match day commercial, $4.22 million in merchandise sales, 64,500 jerseys. Nagami led the way with those uh, international sales in the Asian Rim. Graves, our top goal scorer. Rowe, Mikatin, and Pascarello rounding out the top five. We lined up in the 3-4-1-2 or the 3-4-3. And there is how we lined up. Given Gerber, Ramsey, Kowalski, Wheel, Nagami, Romaine, Pascarello, Gomez Santos. He did not line up there very often. And Cernan and Graves up top. Uh, best 11. There you go. Goals. 58 goals between Graves and Cernan combined. Uh, Romaine, 13 goals, 19 assists from his midfield and number 10 spot on the pitch. 42 appearances for Gibbon. And a 715 rating is very solid for a keeper. Uh, I was named uh, Championship Coach of the Year. It's weird that this runs behind, and they call it the end of season review because we weren't in the championship this year. But remember, we'll get an update here in about a week that will update awards and everything else, at least for me, for coaches. Record set this year Jamie Romain, 19 assists, most assists in a season. Uh, fans player of the season was Romain. Gerver was the young player of the season at 19. Uh, I've got a bone to pick with him, although he's not even a real player. But uh, in my other FM save at the Graf Shop, which is where he started, uh, he has started pushing for a move uh, to a bigger club, such as Lester, possibly. Uh, Pascarello signing of the season. 
Esser with the goal of the season. Top goal scorer with 35 across all competitions is Eric Graves. He's only 26. And Jamie Romain, the most assist at 19. Taking a look at the best 11. Uh, funny enough, oh, Mikatin was named into the overall best 11. You'll figure that. Anybody I recognize in here? I've only been here a couple of years. Gomez Santos up top, uh, who was here when I took over. And that's it. So Mikatin's now on the bench, and he's the only player to crack that starting that best 11. The five-year plan, work within the payroll, sign players to sell for a profit. I think we did that last year. Uh, build a new stadium. So the board have plans to build a new stadium to get rid of King Power. Interesting enough. Next season is still to fight bravely against relegation. But of course, we know that this will probably change with the onset of a new season. So we'll go with that. Percentage of the season missed through injury. So Menza had five injuries, including a three-month hip injury. He missed a third of the season. McNeil missed a third of the season, including four months with a broken ankle. Kevin Day missed uh, 30% with a broken foot three months out. Uh, Gerber, two months with a torn calf muscle. He is still out for about five more weeks. Luckily, his came at the end of the year. But that's some pretty serious injuries, higher than we normally have. I'm going to head home and visit my folks uh, in the U.S. So uh, for training camp next year. You know, that's my, uh, my prerogative. <laughs> and Graves finished second in the Premier League top goal scorer. Uh, the winner was Dale Lynch of Man City with 29. So Graves... Right there, man. Right there. Initial budgets. This is what we were waiting for. Wheel gets a uh, an assist bonus for uh, thirty. No, who? What did he get? Three hundred fifty thousand. Cool. There are our plans. We know nothing about it yet. They want to build a new stadium. They're searching for sites and investors sometime before plans are finalized. Okay. So that's actually brand new. Didn't know anything about it. And initial budgets, $14.79 million for payroll and a transfer budget of $88.5 million. So we've got about $4.3 million, but we did lose $76 million this year. And that's counting the $31 million we made in profit from uh, our table finish. So we really can't afford that. I probably need to stay around that $10 million mark. So we'll probably have to sell some players in order to sign players. We've got plenty of money, just we can't go up on payroll. Uh, let's take a quick look at the team report, and we will filter out expiring contracts. And we'll add in our U23s there. So keeper-wise, I could probably upgrade on Gibbon. Now... Only three shutouts, but less than two goals a match. He played well. He's got room to grow. He's only 26. I'm not going to say that's a must-have, but I think we can get rid of uh, El Batabi, and we'll have to look at some of these other guys. Uh, you know, he's only 16, five-star potential. So that's probably our future. Bernat, I think I signed him to actually be our reserve because I thought Batavi was leaving and then neither one of them left. So one of those two is probably going to leave here in the offseason. Uh, McNeil, 28. Fowler's 22. I might try to move Ramsey this year. Everybody else, I think we're fine. Pablo Maney's a, a signing for the future. Falsatini was for the future. <laughs> So I think we're okay there. Don't really need a center back. And I think we played okay there. On the left side, we've got Josh Wheel, who is 26. And he is he's more of a natural central mid, as you can see. But he, uh, he can pass the ball. He can cross the ball. So he can do it out there. Um, Chasson is actually not bad. And he's got four-star potential, some room to grow. Esser played really well out there. He's got four and a half star potential. So we've got a really young team, and I think we can let these guys develop. Uh, Wheel, Nagami, 
Yami is 29. Now, as much as I like him, this is about the time I'd start looking to offload him. Do we get rid of him? He started 28, only one goal, one assist, and a 6-6-9. I'm not really happy with those numbers, and if that's a place that I can upgrade, I think he's gone. Now, Mateus is in there. Luke Rowe. Now, Luke's only, and he's more of a striker. He was really a striker. So we've got Mateus, Romain. I think Romain's coming back, but again, he slots in at that number 10. I think I could use one good central mid or a good attacking mid to allow, you know, wheel to slide back and Romain to slide back or move up one of the two uh probably need a number 10 and i'm still i'm still happy with cernan he had a good year but it really fell apart down the road but he he overperformed he met expectations again even if he's not my starter there's no real, I mean, Gomez Santos is only 25. Maybe I push him back up. I don't know. So a mid central mid or a left mid, one of the two to allow wheel to settle in one spot. Probably a number 10. I think I'm okay at striker. Pascarello's out there. Mikeaton is out here. Henson's. I could probably get rid of him. He's 30. I think he's expendable. Only four starts. I'm going to go ahead and list him just to put him on the market. And Mensa. Mensa's 26. And you know what? He's not, he's not an important player anymore. I think I'm going to go ahead and drop him to... Where is the... Where's the thing I'm looking for? The, I don't think he can be my captain, but I want to take him out of being an important player. He's got to be upset about that. And, and it, it, well, he shouldn't be. Just, I mean, look at his ability. It's really fallen off. I think he's good enough to be a reserve for us, and I'd like to keep him there, but I don't think he's starter quality. So we don't really have a lot of needs this year. So May 15th, contracts expire June 30th. July 1st is kind of the big day. So let me get into it, and we'll be back uh, July 1st with transfer news. We're back a little early, June 10th. I've just signed two players. Oh, my God. I think they're incredible. Another wonder kid has joined Leicester. Please welcome Rui Ramos and Carlos Vitor, an 18-year-old wonder kid, a 19-year-old winger. We paid $46 million for Ramos. 14 and a quarter million for Vitor. Uh, Ramos, uh, there's a lot of money tied up in this deal, uh, as, as Lelugio likes to say, on the never never, uh, possibly. Uh, it goes, I don't usually do contracts like that. This doesn't have anything crazy, but it potentially goes up to 91 million over time. Uh, but boy, he's good. Let's take a look at Vitor first. So he's going to end up moving into that left wing position and probably start there. He's Brazilian, valued at $30 million right out of the gate. Uh, he came up through, uh, I don't even know what the name of these clubs are in Brazil, um, but that club, uh, he was loaned out to Union Berlin, actually played pretty well in the Bundesliga, and uh, oh, left-footed. Decent flair. I mean, just average. You know, that's that's low for a, a Brazilian, right? But look at these physicals. Oh, my God, he is so fast. Very determined. Work rate, vision, decent stam. Because those are some things that I have to look at. Stamina, work rate. Look at the crossing. Dribbling. First touch. Oh, my God, this guy's going to be astounding, I think. Three-star current, five-star potential. And he's and I think he sucks compared to the, to Rui Ramos. Let's take a look at him. He comes to us from Sporting. Came up in their system in Portugal. Nine goals, eight assists last year for 
Sporting in the Portuguese top division, 7.54. This guy is going to be so good. So, so good. Uh, physicals through the roof. He can't jump. He cannot jump. He's a very grounded individual. Uh, not because he's fat, just because he doesn't jump, and he doesn't need to. Uh, he wants to be played as a number 10 as an advanced playmaker. So uh, we had to promise him. He was pretty demanding in what he wanted in his contract. and uh, But I said, eh, yeah, four-star current, five-star potential, a 20 flare. I can't wait to see this guy just on, on in the highlights. Uh, uh, <laughs> 18 vision, 16 passing, 16 first touch. Dribbling's only average, but oh my, I, I just... I smell the assists that will be pouring off of this guy next year. Our strike force should love him. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, we have also uh, bid farewell to Jay Gibbon, our starting keeper for $28 million. Uh, he's 26. He's not old. I thought about keeping him. But I said, I need to sell somebody. I need to sell some people. And he was wanted. I got a good deal on him. Because remember, we only paid $1.9 million for him back in the championship days. So he's done the job for us. Not a lot of clean sheets. I really want to get a keeper at the next level. You got to remember, El Batabi is much younger. He think he's only 21. Is that right? And he's five-star potential. And honestly, what made him expendable when I compared him with Gibbon, he's just as good, if not better, in a lot of categories. I said, younger, cheaper, I need the money from the sale, done deal. Done deal. So uh, we made that. And uh, yeah, so that looks good. We had offers for Sandy Ramsey. He rejected them. He rejected the contracts. We had two bids for thirty-two and a half million. Uh, Dean Clark is going is going to be leaving. Uh, we have accepted a deal on him. I believe he is going to. Yep, Eintracht Frankfurt, former club, twenty-six million dollars, uh, thirteen million up front. Nagami, we had offers for him uh, with Knotts County for thirty-seven. Unfortunately, he rejected both of those, and then Galatzeray came out. Yeah, God, I hate them. And thirty and a half million, and uh, that's the one he threw a fit that he wanted to go there. So I'm like, you're going to cost me seven million. You, you go, whatever, just GTFO. And we also had a thirty-seven million dollar deal on Stigen Henson's, and he rejected their contract. So I'm continuing to try to move some of these guys. But that's our two big signings finance-wise. Uh, we do have $36 million back in the kitty. And we're about where we started at with our committed spending. Uh, so two big players coming in. Really haven't changed anything from a financial standpoint. I am going to go look and possibly get a short-term goalkeeper or I'm going to look for a good younger reserve, um, or not as good a reserve, somebody that can maybe do the job uh, if El Batabi would go down, and we'll just give the number one shirt to him for this season. There is a striker that I had my eye on last year, and I just saw he's transfer listed. I'm getting ready to go start sniffing around with him and see if I've got enough money to make that deal. And if I do and if i do yeah i'm gonna have to give some thought at, at moving somebody and it may be cernan or mikaton drawing the short straw there i really need bringing in two more foreigners i think we're going to be up to 13 i really think we need to maybe move one of these guys and it could be cernan that's the odd man out it could be mikaton i can't really judge him because he he played more winger number 10 last year so i think that maybe slots him in same with gomez santos i really like him he's only 25 i think he's going to be a good reserve striker for us so anyway is he good enough to be our deputy 
I don't even remember signing him. I, I must have signed him earlier. It wasn't a recent thing. He's not bad. He's 17. Certainly not as good. Maybe some room to grow. We'll see. All right. Well, anyway, that is what we're looking at. Uh, what is his uh, potential? Tell me. Not yet. Not yet. Not till he gets here, I guess. All right. Well, uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and call that an episode. Uh, the two big signings. We do have some guys we're looking to ship out. And I have a few more moves that I want to make. So next episode, we'll come back. We'll check out any final transfer news. And we'll get into the first match of the season. Let me know what you think of these two uh, two Brazilians coming in. They're both Brazilian, yeah? No, Ramos is Portuguese. Sorry. The other guy is Brazilian. I knew one of them was Brazilian. Brazilian and Portuguese. And they both speak Portuguese, I believe. Technical? Okay. Anyway, uh, I am so excited about this. Oh, these guys look so good. All right. We'll see you guys next episode. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and daily football manager content here on the channel Monday through Saturday. And let me know about these two guys. What do you think? What do you think? See you guys. Bye.